if I could tell anybody in person, smoking, it is not a need, it is a want. I don't think of it no more. I'm done. D-O-N-E, I'm done. It's been a challenge. Uh, it's been an uphill climb. Uh, but I'm, I'm up on top of the hill. You definitely need to quit, and it's a hard decision, and it's a lot to accomplish. It's an everyday battle to, to not smoke once you have smoked and you quit. Is it worth smoking a cigarette? You know, it's, this is your life. There's, why, why take the, the chances? It doesn't make no sense. Staying smoke-free is an important step because smoking will have negative effects on your cancer treatment and will affect your quality of life for you and your family. Although quitting smoking can be a difficult thing to do when fighting cancer, it is something that you have control over. This video is for cancer patients who have recently quit smoking. Whether it has been one day or longer, this video is designed to provide you with the information and skills you need to stay smoke-free. During the video, you will see how you can improve your cancer outcome by learning about the benefits of staying smoke-free, ways of overcoming emotional and physical challenges related to your cancer diagnosis, and how to cope with smoking urges. I think a lot of patients don't know. They think, oh, I've already got, got cancer, the horse is out of the barn, you know, what's the point at this point? But, but there really is a point in terms of your cancer outcomes and your ability to handle treatment. My treatment to cancer helped me a lot to want to quit smoking due to the fact of everything that I've been through. I had a chance to analyze and actually see what cancer can actually do to you. You know, I had doctors tell me numerous of times to quit smoking. You know, you, you hear it, but you don't hear it. And when I actually had to go through everything I've been through now, it, it's, it was very important to me, for myself, to stop smoking, you know, because I have a lot to live for. Research suggests that continuing to smoke after being diagnosed with cancer can make chemotherapy, radiation, and surgical treatment less effective. So for instance, in people that have had an early stage lung cancer, and we recommend them having some post-operative chemotherapy to increase their odds of being cured, if they continue to smoke, they may be blocking the effects of chemotherapy. So they get the toxicity of the chemotherapy and they don't get the benefit. There are many positive effects to staying smoke-free. Some of these benefits will be felt right away, such as better treatment outcomes, less complications from surgery, less side effects such as loss of taste, dry mouth, and mucositis, less chance of infection, improved wound healing, fewer treatment complications. Other benefits include better survival rates compared to smokers, less chance of cancer returning, and less risk of developing another cancer. By staying smoke-free, you will improve your quality of life. You feel stronger and you're more active, more energetic, you want to live your life. I don't cough anymore. I can breathe. Before I can't even walk past my block, around the block, without stopping, gasping for breath. You breathe better, you, you will see your energy level go up. And that's all it takes, you know, it's, it's really true. Do I breathe better? Yes, and that's a big point. <laughs> and I think I have done better post-cancer wise than if I'd been smoking. Quitting smoking can be a difficult life challenge. Stopping smoking is not something you say, well, I stopped today and that's it, you're done. You're not done. It's a, it's an everyday battle not to smoke. In the back of my mind, I knew I did not need to be smoking if I wanted to breathe, and so I just never went back to it. Was it hard? Yes, very hard. Receiving a cancer diagnosis can bring feelings of stress and negative emotions that can make quitting smoking and staying smoke-free especially difficult. But you never think that you're going to be a cancer patient. It's just something that you don't have in the back of your mind until it's found and then you're faced with the consequences of smoking and that is the, it's a guilt trip too. I can't explain my emotions. I was just uh, so down so shocked, uh, scared, uh, very scared. It was just uh, like somebody pulled the rug out from under me.
In the past, you may have used smoking as a way to deal with stress or other negative emotions. You may even have thought that smoking helped you calm down and improve your mood when in fact, 20 minutes after a cigarette, you experience feelings of nicotine withdrawal, resulting in irritability and negative mood. Having a cigarette really only returns your mood to normal. Rather than calming you down, smoking actually increases your heart rate, increases your blood pressure. Uh, so it, nicotine is a stimulant, so it stimulates you even though it may seem because it distracts you from your stressor to be um, relaxing you at the moment. But it actually is doing the opposite. There are many methods of coping with stress and negative mood other than smoking. Some examples of ways to cope include deep breathing, engaging in a physical activity like walking or gardening, and seeking support from family and friends. I still get depressed every once in a while. I get depressed because I want to do certain stuff that I can't do. We have ways to help patients with depression and anxiety. Um, we have medications that are very effective. Um, patients can be referred for counseling. There's a great support network available to patients. Even a support group may be a really good way for a patient to deal with that. That's a much more positive in the short term and in the long term and isn't associated with the same guilt and um, feelings of helplessness that sometimes continuing to smoke is. Pain and fatigue are commonly reported symptoms for patients undergoing cancer treatment. You may think having a cigarette is a way to cope with these symptoms, but smoking can make these symptoms worse. For example, cancer patients who continue to smoke actually report more pain than those who quit smoking. Depending on the intensity of your pain and fatigue, speak to your healthcare provider who may suggest medication or other approaches such as acupuncture, massage, exercise, and meditation. Instead of reaching for your cigarettes, try to recognize that there are other resources that are available to you. There are a lot of patients that deal with cancer. There are a lot of different coping strategies. We need to find the one that works for you, that keeps you smoke free. Cravings can be one of the most difficult aspects of staying smoke free. But research has shown that people who use coping skills or quit smoking medications are more likely to stay smoke free than those who do not. If you suddenly give up smoking, you're gonna want cigarettes for a while. Part of that is because of nicotine withdrawal. Um, and those types of urges are, can be dealt with um, pretty effectively through pharmacotherapy, through smoking cessation medications, uh, like nicotine replacement products or some of the other medications that are available. Your healthcare provider can help you decide which quit smoking medication will work best for you while you are undergoing your cancer treatment. In addition to quit smoking medications, another effective way to deal with smoking urges is to use coping skills. In fact, research shows that by using both medication and coping skills, you will have better success when combating smoking urges. When you're having a craving to smoke, it's important to engage in what we call mental or behavioral coping responses. Mental coping responses are things that you can tell yourself. The all-time favorite of our clients is telling yourself that smoking is simply not an option. I just tell myself I quit and try to put my mind on something else. I think of being wrapped up in a mask which was formed for me during radiation treatment that covered my face, my whole chest, uh, and I was literally bolted to a table. Behavioral coping responses, on the other hand, are things that you can physically do to distract yourself from that craving. Um, going for a walk, taking a drink of water, taking deep breaths, calling a friend, uh, fiddling with a pencil, uh, chewing gum. Almost anything can be a behavioral coping response. I would just get up and walk out if I were around a bunch of smokers and had that urge to smoke. You just have to get away from it. You have to do something to, to keep entertained and keep that off your mind because if, if you're laying around and just you know all you're thinking about is you know I'm sick or you know I'm bored oh there's nothing you know you're gonna probably pick up a cigarette. Ice cream's a good deterrent especially double fudge chocolate. <laughs> That's good deterrent for smoking a cigarette. I just had a couple of half gallons in my freezer. <laughs> When one runs out, I go get another one for a backup in case the other one runs low. Learn which ones work for you and have them at the ready so that when 
an urge hits you, and it's not always predictable, but when it does, you'll have something you do almost as automatically as when you smoke the cigarette. One of the things that people find most helpful when they're quitting is the support of friends and family. You got to have a support group. And I say my church family was my support group. My wife doesn't smoke. There's no smokers in my house. And there is people in the family that smoke, but when they come to the house, they have to smoke outside. I always tell patients of mine with their family members that, you know, if, if, if dad just got over lung cancer surgery and is quitting uh, smoking and staying smoke free, uh, but, but someone in the house is continuing to smoke, then I mean, that, that's like, you know, uh, having one kid with a chocolate cake and the other one just standing there watching it. It's like impossible for someone to uh, resist that. It can be very tempting to tell yourself, I can smoke just one, but nine out of ten people who have that first cigarette go back to regular smoking. The damage is done. You don't know what your prognosis is going to be. And so if I have one more cigarette, it's not going to be that big a deal, but that one more cigarette is going to get you back into smoking full time, guaranteed. You want to avoid that first cigarette if at all possible, but if it does happen, try to learn from it. What was going on at the moment you had that cigarette? What can you uh, avoid in the future uh, to avoid putting yourself in that position? Um, and rather than beating yourself up about that cigarette, try to make an immediate commitment to go and smoke free again. Get rid of that cigarette as soon as you realize you're smoking it. Get out of that situation. Uh, recommit yourself to uh, total abstinence from tobacco. Even though cancer is a time where many people may feel that so many things are out of their control, smoking is one thing that you can be in complete and total control of. Remember, stay smoke free to improve your cancer treatment and your health. Remember, when you have an urge to smoke, use your coping strategies. I just knew that it wasn't good for me, that especially after I was diagnosed with cancer, that I would do better smoke-free than I would if I continued to smoke. It was 100% me. I was in control. I had to take control. I am in control of me. Nobody else. Not even my husband. It's me. I'm free. Gives you a a good feeling, sense about yourself that, hey, I know this was a bear and I tackled it and I beat it. It's not worth your life. Cigarettes are not worth your life. But I chose to fight and I chose for a reason. And I'm not going to let cigarettes conquer me neither. I just, I just can't. I can't. I fought one cancer, I'm not going to fight another one, not if I can help. And that's something that I can change, just by not picking up that cigarette. Remember, when it comes to smoking, you are in control.